So, we've been talking enough already. Hi, Internet. I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. And this is Wine is Serious Business, yes. episode 291. Here with some blind... Oh, we got the blind bags again. We're here yep. with some Chardonnay. Uh, from what vineyard? Or what vintage? Uh, so, 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 we got an interesting lineup. It's one of those things I'm kind of like walking around stores and shops. An idea just kind of strikes me. I'm like, man, a show is sitting right in front of me. Okay. So, we got... We've got a Willamette Valley Chardonnay, a AVA Chardonnay, and a single vineyard Chardonnay. Oh, right? okay. Ramping up price points. All same vintage? Uh, unfortunately, no. The The two <sighs> lower tiers are 14. The single vineyard's 13. So that should make it easier. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but I feel that's fair, right? The higher end single vineyard stuff usually will age a little longer, right? Doesn't come out quite as fast. Yep. I think I think everybody knows that that makes a mix... You know, releases their their blends a little earlier. Um, sure. So, kind of our goal here is to to try and figure out which ones which. See how they're tasting right. If you want to drink one right now. Right. I don't know nothing about 2014 Chardonnays. I bet. I imagine they'd be pretty good though. I. You know, I, I think I really like the 12s. I think 14 so kind of for a, You know, 12 yeah. is kind of a warmer year too. Um, I really liked the 2012 Chardonnays I had. 13s were kind of a lighter vintage, um, which I think yeah. is okay for Chardonnay. I, I, I'm not. I, I've had yeah. good experiences with the lighter ones. Um, I don't need the ripeness to get that richness. I don't mind a little bit of that richness coming from the oak on slightly less less ripe fruit. That that yeah. seems to be kind of my sweet spot. This um, was the first wine we poured, I think. All right. Yeah, I should probably separate these because that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the color's a little very gold on this one. Almost a little cloudy too. Yeah, well, not really. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Just barely. Yeah. Boy, that smells good. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it smells like good Chardonnay. Right? Yeah, it's got, I mean, it, that's, that's a very easy descriptor for this. It's got a great Chardonnay nose. It's go man, like golden apples, a little bit of citrus, just that like little hint of butterscotch. It's not like a heavy, rich nose, but there's, it, yeah. there's definitely a suggestion of that in there that, that works really well for me. That sort of buttery note that comes from malolactic is definitely in there. Um, the oak is definitely on the lower side, although there is some that can be the, that that sort of vanilla aroma is definitely a oh, part man. of the part of the nose. But there's a really good balance of all the flavors, and the fruit is definitely in the forefront. Um, while everything sort of provides like just more complexity and lift to the aromas, it smells really nice and a great, great. like pure core of like crisp apples. A lot of that shows through um, on the palate. Again, I get a lot of apples, both golden and edging towards green a little bit. Yep. Some good crisp acidity on the palate. Uh, the richness suggested by the nose is there. It's not quite as heavy as I thought it was going to be. No. Uh, based on how it smelled, but it's still present. The apple flavors are definitely there and probably the most present flavor on the on the mid palate. Um, it's, it's somewhere in between green apple and like a, a ripe honey crisp apple. Like there's a little bit of sweetness there. It also has this sort of like uh, stone fruity peachy thing going on. Um, almost has like a sort of, uh, I wouldn't call it tannic, but it has a little bit of like grip in, in the mid palate and finish. Um, totally with you on that. Good acid uh, on the tail end as well. Um, drinks really nicely. Pretty straightforward as far as the flavors. Like the nose lends to a lot of complexity. The palate is pretty just nice fruit, a little bit of great texture, um, and the nice acid, but pretty straightforward. Nice texture, and I really, I really do like how that little bit of that little bit of richness, right? That little bit of hint of butterscotch kind of settles in on the back, sits on the back yeah. of the tongue. The acidity is kind of sinking more into the gums. Really runs out long. Really good pure fruit flavors on this. Yeah. Um, that I that I'm that I'm really feeling. I, I feel like it's a really good. Hmm. I feel like it's a really good use of those. Uh, like that, that malolactic and, and, and like a little bit of the oak to kind of provide some richness because the fruit really is pretty zippy, I think, without Agreed. those elements. Agreed. Um, because it's not super ripe fruit. I think this this could be this could be pretty tough if it if it wasn't put together so well. You could tell that there's those rich flavors are there, but yeah, the the, the sort of tart, um, uh, bright, bright fruit is definitely over the top of all of it, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah, it's a it's a nice wine. This is actually drinking really nicely. Yeah, so. totally. But um I can see where the acid might be a little bit too much for some people. The acid is definitely at a high point, I think. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it, I think it plays well with the fruit flavors and the richness that is in the wine. Um, probably like a solid eight, nine point, to almost ninety point wine for me. Like, 
I, I said it was a little straightforward, but like the things it does well, it does really, really nicely. Super fun to drink, super delicious, and the nose is the aroma on the nose is fantastic. And and I feel like uh, I, I feel like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I, like the complexity for me is there. It, it's a little more subtle um, and lingers long, and the acidity to me suggests. Uh, kind of an exciting mm. future for it too. I'd be interested in tasting this after another year. I think there'd be kind of some more really good evolution. Um, I, f I feel, and I, f I feel that things are integrated pretty well already too. Agreed. Um, for everything yeah. being rather peaky, I mean, like, or not peaky, it's just like everything's very high toned. Um, it's all very well. Yeah, if, if you're an acid hater, definitely this isn't going to work out yeah. too well for you, but very few of you folks watch this show. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so really solid. Which is 90, 90 plus. 90 plus. plus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 90. I'm swayed by the Dan. I, I probably, 89 plus 90. Yeah, so somewhere mm -hmm. in there. So. And I feel with time, it's going to, we're going to creep up a little more too. I'm feeling good about that. So our second wine. Second gotta put monkey bag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one's looking a little. Wine number two. Clear. Whoa, much lighter color. And that's good. Because honestly, I thought I, I thought I had a line on the last one as the 2013. But looking at the color on this, like now my, I'm not sure which one is which anymore. I don't know. Yeah. So, so that's good. We get we get back into full uncertainty. Yep. In my area. All right. That's wow. This is a totally different wine. Hmm. So like the oak toast on this is just yeah. over the top, man. Like. Like maybe we should have drank this wine first, but you know, whatever. Coming from the second wine, this is this the aroma on this is very very strong. Like we're talking like big time vanilla oak, um, like toasted oak, like the the sort of you know charred oak or whatever. So toast toast yeah, the end of the bit, barrel. A little bit of toast on there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's and more so there's a little floral element, but the fruit's kind of in the background, right? There's not a lot of fruit jumping out of the glass. I Agreed. Guess. Yeah, like yeah. there's there's fruit, but man, it's just not the strong the thing you smell. It really. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Kind of lends towards a little like like kind of like dried grass in the summer, or like a little oh, yeah, yeah. dried dried dirt, something That's like that. That's a too, great too. explanation for it. Totally like uh, yeah, you got done mowing the lawn and part of, like half the lawn's dead, yeah. and it's that dry that dry uh, summer grass sort of smell. Yeah. Well, wow. nice descriptor. Definitely a little more of those, uh, you know, toasted flavors coming through on the palate, but it's not as overwhelming as the nose suggests. No. Um, this one's definitely more straightforward across the board, like a little, little pop of the city, little pop of fruit flavors, kind of that foundation. More yeah. tropical fruit flavors too. Like we're talking like mango, sure, um, pineapple, sort of. Uh, not anywhere near the apple flavors for me on this one. Like this is a completely different, like a completely different wine. So much more delicate. Board. We totally should have done this one for earlier. Yeah, but that's that's how it goes. That's how it, maybe we'll come back to it later. But uh, and uh, yeah, so but but the, the 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 oak usage is definitely more apparent on this wine. And a little more heavy-handed, right? I feel like, like there's a little more lees contact going on too. Uh, once we reveal these, if you know better, please let me know or tell tell me I'm right or wrong. I'm curious because I feel like some of that isn't isn't so much oak as it's like lees on the palate, too. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's sort of like in the in the finish, right? Like mm -hmm. you can definitely taste it as the wines after you swallow it, and that sort of edge in the finish um, would lend to some lees contact for sure, but. Um, Sort of, we were talking about integration on the last wine. This wine doesn't have any of that to me. Yeah, it tastes it's, younger, yeah. Yeah, it tastes younger. It tastes like it needs a little more time in bottle, or uh, or it's just a cheaper wine, maybe. Um, uh, the fruit's yeah. a lot more subtle to me, too. Like, as I'm having a few more sips, I'm starting to get a little more of it. Um, But it doesn't does definitely doesn't have the complexity of the last one. I'm gonna be I'm pretty confident in guessing that there's a substantial price difference here, but but whatever, yeah. that's fine. You never know. Right? Yeah. That said You'd be surprised. Um so. yeah. Yeah, you, so it's, blind shows. I, are I think fun, consistently yeah. we're surprised on blind shows. I can see a little bit you said a little something about a floral aspect before mm -hmm. when you kind of do the like the slurpy thing. Like yeah, definitely you just take a sip. It's definitely all fruit. Sort of the secondary flavors that come from like maybe you said least contact or like what I think is like an oak sort of flavor. Mm -hmm. Um 
but uh, if you really try to aerate the wine and get it back there, you can kind of get like a little bit of like honeydew or like uh, or uh, just just a, a nice light floral thing. It's really quite nice. Um, yeah, there are some nice there are some really nice aspects of this wine that are there's there's some aspects of this wine that are very nice. The grammar is terrible today. Sorry, um, but. But overall, just the integration's not all the way there. I think it kind of struggles coming after the wine we just drank because that wine is all the way put together, and this is just sort of figuring itself out still. Yeah. So like an eighty-six point wine for me, eighty-five point. It's got great flavors, got great in, like interesting things, but it's just not all the way there yet. Yeah, I, I'm with you on eighty-six points, and I, I also want to make a note like, in comparison to other wines of this range, at this range, I kind of like that. Like, hmm. there's no present sweetness or artificiality or like. A lot of times when you're getting those open no. flavors, you're getting like some yeah. like heavy weighty richness, and none of that's going on. This is definitely on the crisp side, I think, with that leaves or that oak providing a little bit of structure. Sure. Yeah. But everything's definitely a little more straightforward, a little more simple. Um, you know, nice drink. I'm really hoping this is one of the cheaper ones, and then we'll all feel good about it at the end of the show. I hope we do. All right, third wine. Let's put it back. We're gonna move on for the know, viewers. Yeah. Speaking of the viewers, why speaking don't we of viewers, show some love for the viewers. We got a. Uh, First shout out to people giving comments on the website. Jeff Frankel gave us a great comment. Uh, we were talking, this is back a couple shows. He was talking about Thanksgiving oh, yeah, yeah. wines of note. Um, he said a 1990 uh, Faley's Nebbiola de Alba, which is pretty cool, and a Tom Eddie Cabernet, and a Prince Pontia, Poniatowski Vouvray Agile Blanc. It's a mouthful. It, it is, and, and all new wines to me, yeah. uh, but really appreciate coming back with those details. Yeah, That's really comments. cool. I saw, I saw that comment. Too. And a bunch of killer interactions on Facebook lately. It's really been creeping up. This is how we see that like kind of words yeah. getting out. We really appreciate that. We're just going to say likes on the lax post. Yeah. Going to go through Here. a huge list. Put that back Colin there. Rance. Carlos Rojas, Evan Roberts, Gina Tharp, Cliff Sagu, Billy Weinheimer, Thomas Monroe, Joshua Chang, Jessica Cortell, Corey Schuster, John Moser, Stephanie Eads, Paul, John Groshaw, Keith Lundquist, Ian James Cooper, Matt DeVincenzi, Joel Rollins, Michael Alberti, Justin Paul Russell, Norman Whitehead, and Farsing Vineyard. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's awesome to see that kind of interaction on these posts. You're supporting your fellow winemakers when they show up in our feed. That's what we love to see. Yeah. Build the community. Just the strong amount of interaction and yeah. information that gets it gets dispersed this way. It's just so much fun. And see. when you like our show, your friends see that you interacted, and they like our show. That's how we spread the likes yeah. and shares. Go way further than anything else we do to get to get these shows out there, and we very much appreciate it. And it's what keeps us going and like wanting to like put together these weird shows or these fun shows for you. So thank you so much. Yes, keep it up. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So, here's to you guys. Wine number three. Wine nice number three. Healthy pour here. What's the last wine? Yeah, it's a nice nice nose on this. Yeah, I it feel feels it. good. Clicking, clicking. Yeah. It's Jerusha asking how was the sh how was the show? I'll let you know. <laughs> we'll let you know live. Yeah. There we go. Live audience calling. We should do that if we had our schedule down better. We could do stuff like this that. This smells like Lee's to me. Whereas the last wine smelled like more like oak. More like oak. interesting. Yeah. All right. Do you agree or no? I I, I kind of disagree. So maybe we'll okay. get some expert expert weigh in in the comments to let us know. So what's that aroma then? It's like that. It reminds me of like the bottom of the. I don't know. Like, like grape leaves. Yeah. The only times I've smelled it is working in a winery or like, you know, shipping barrels, shipping wine from barrels. Like you smell the inside of a barrel after all that, all those chunks are left in the bottom of it. Yeah. It sort of sure. smells. All right. You may, you yeah. may have done more of that than I have. So. Yeah. I've been lucky. You know, Johan Vineyards, shout out. Nice. They, they've had yeah. me there a couple times. I think they're... Their 2009 uh, reserve was cloudy because of me. I'm really sorry <laughs> oh, about <man>. that. <laughs> well, right. They were putting it to tank, and I, you know, you have the the spigot you put through the bottom of the through the through the opening in the barrel. There's like this long gun, and it has a, uh, a a screw on it that allows you to adjust the height. But it's essentially a nail that goes into the bottom of the barrel, yeah. And then it allows you to adjust the height based based on the amount of leaves that's essentially in the bottom, right? So you can sit. Just above the lees, right, and pull the pull wine out. out. Yeah, exactly. And so, I got it in there, and we were fine. And then I like it took my took pressure off for a second, and it went sideways, right, and shook everything up, oh, and and bring all the lees. It up rocks. Up. You could see, you can see it. There's a glass yeah. portion of it where you can see what's coming through the line, and it just like went red. It went uh, uh, yellow, like <laughs> like you can't see through it for a split oh. second, and and their wine had. 
had chunks, or not, didn't have chunks in it, it was just... just a little cloudy. Well, a little cloudy. Unfiltered, that's the... Unfiled, yeah. unfiltered, but it was, it was good. The 2009 Reserve, for anyone who knows Johan's wines, the yeah. Chardonnay Reserve from 2009 is just beautiful. Anyway, sorry. This has uh, kind of that, that fuller, whatever it is, like little, that, that little bit of richness, mm -hmm. um, but also the fruit flavors are definitely pretty full on this as well. Agreed. Uh, or fruit scents. Um, getting into those apples, getting a little more into the citrus, I'm getting a little more like really some nice ripe oranges along with kind of the limes and things like that. Maybe yeah. a touch of pineapple, not like super ripe, juicy pineapple out of the can, but like you just cut into a fresh one. But the fruit flavors are the most prevalent thing on the nose here, right? Like yeah. I get very little actually of like the malolactic sort of thing. Sure. Like the, the, the sort of like buttery, those tones that can come out when like a, a fully mallowed Chardonnay. Like those aren't even that apparent here on the nose. Like it's yeah. definitely more just fruit, um, and then that's pretty sweet actually, especially coming from the last wine. Um, the oak usage doesn't do, isn't immediately prevalent on the nose either. Isn't prevalent on the nose either. And I feel like there's a little bit of sage sweet too, oak. like a little herbal component, adding some adding some complexity to the nose. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, it smells really nice. Boy. It drinks really nicely too. Yeah, there's richer flavors here on on the palate than there is on the nose. Mm -hmm. Like really, that finish is like got a good amount of richness and sort of Man. like that mallow flavor, but like it's not on the nose at all, at least to me. Boy, this is in a this is in a good spot right now. I think definitely feels riper, right? Like I'm, I, that pineapple I was talking about. I'm really gonna stick with that. I feel like the pineapple pineapple's a little Agreed. riper on the nose, a little bit of that pure acidity running right down the middle. A little bit of that structural richness kind of sitting to the outsides of the palate. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a touch of bitterness coming in with that, but it's good complexity. And the fruit's got... Yeah, agreed. Fruit, yeah. The fruit's got the uh, kind of kind of the, the width to it and kind of a little bit of complexity that really fills that space and, and, and makes that acceptable. I think if that kind of that kind of like structure or touch of bitterness were present in this wine, I think it would throw it off balance and I, I don't know if I'd be able to handle it, but it works all right here. Well, I think that touch of bitterness comes from what feels like integrated fruit flavors, right? Like mm -hmm. there's times where you sort of eat um, slightly underripe pineapple yeah. and you get a touch of that. Or like a slightly underripe peach and you can get sort of that. And those are flavors that I can kind of see in this wine. Yep. Right? Um, definitely less of the apple flavors. Like they're... I agree. This is this is definitely more towards the stone fruit, towards the pineapple, towards the cantaloupe. Um there is nice richness on the mid palate and finish, like that you can definitely see, like okay, this is a mallowed Chardonnay, and this is nice, but like the oak usage in a really good place because it's just yeah, there providing really a little is. bit of warmth and vanilla in the, in the mid palate and richness, but like the integration is just really well done. I agree, there is a little bit of a bitter edge on the finish, that sort of pairs well with the acid. I don't mind it so much, but I can see where people would. Um, it's solid, a solid Chardonnay. Boy, I, I feel like the fruit's definitely riper on this one than the other, the other two. Um, but it, boy, I think this is a fourteen. I, I think it's gotta. Be. Be. I think it's gotta, gotta be. be. Yeah, I think it's gotta be. Uh, boy, oh, that's. I'm really. I'm only okay. So, a, a ninety, another, another eighty-nine to ninety point wine yeah. for me. I think. Like while the bitterness doesn't like, I should say it, like it doesn't detract. It's not a huge problem. It definitely keeps this wine from going to like you know the the, the upper levels of ninety like above well above ninety points. Um, I think it's a, got a good complexity. I think for people who like Chardonnay fruited wines and less of the mallow, I think this is totally going to be that style of wine that you want to drink. Because um, some people really don't like that like heavily mallowed style, right? And I feel like this walks a great line. I think you kind of have to choose a lot of times between really crisp austere chardonnay and yeah, overly yeah, ripe yeah. and heavy chardonnay that sucks and this gets to that ripe side like it gets away from the gets austere both. side fully but without going too far like this yeah, is yeah. this really is probably my outer limit on the uh big fruit flavor side sure um sure i can see that <laughs> we got cat cat yeah. hijinks over there okay so um <laughs> but boy it's Tasty. Let's get some ninety points. Ninety points. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm, I'm going to give it eighty nine. I'm going to take it back just a little step. Uh, I th I think it's appealing to a lot of people. I, I get some really great white flower kind of flavors on there. Mm -hmm. And and the point I want to make: if you think Viognier is a good grape, you should just drink this instead because everything that Viognier does well, 
this is also doing, I think, and it does it better. Dan's such a fan. Um, you hate I, it. I know. I, I can't. I can't he resist the it. opportunity. You know, when you're talking about kind of a little bit of that edging towards tropical fruit, little white flower flavors. What grape am I talking about? It sounds like Viognier. No, this is good Chardonnay. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, pucker your lips a couple times. Are your, are your lips? Uh, do you have sugar on them? I, you know, I feel like there might be a touch of RS in here. I know this is scandalous. I, that people, people just fight, happened. I was people, like, I was people like, would fight me over that, but I feel that with the right fruit. Kind oh, of that man. structure. I think there might a be a touch of RS in this wine. Um, and it's definitely not f immediately present on the palate. It's something that, as I just was just talking, my yeah. lips stuck together. And I'm like, that's something that happens. And, and again, you right? Like if there, if if there wasn't that little bit of bitterness, if there wasn't that full acidity, it could be... It, it yeah. could really fall off the table and kind of have trouble. I'll stick with 89, 90 points. So, yeah, I, yeah and I, I'm going to stick with 89, too, because this is really well. This is put together okay. by somebody that knows what they're doing. So, right. let's, let's, let's just jump make right your into calls. it. Let's start with the bottom, right? Thir I think we both agree that this is the, That's 14. This is the entry level one, 14, right? 14, 14, 13. I'm going to stick with, thir even though thir this was the darkest of the three, yeah. I'm going to stick with this being 13 and probably the most expensive of them. And I'm with you. I think we're in agreement yeah. on how this is going to play out. Yeah. Let's hope we're right. Based on the bottle shape. Yeah, why not? Shape. Take a guess. Take a um, guess. Yeah. Based on the bottle shape, it's a Chardonnay bottle, right? I know, but but there's there's people, people use certain glass. Like this is something that sticks oh, in my mind, really? man. Um, I'm gonna say this is a Walter Scott wine. All right. No. 2013 Cameron Abbey Ridge. Holy shit. Nice. So so you, yeah. so we're right on that. That's good. That this complexity is, shows through. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. This is really good. Um, um, Totally in line with with other Abbey Ridge bottlings I've had in the past. The acid is always just through the roof on on vintages, um, but delicious. Yeah, I, and and I think my favorite of the, I mean I should say that before we did the taste before I pulled the bags, but this is probably my favorite of the three. Yeah, totally. Shout out to Michael Alberti too. I did ask I did ask when I was selecting what I was going to do this or the Chloe of the tree, which one's drinking better right now, and he says definitely go with the Abbey Ridge. All right, and. Uh, Boy, so I this one I actually guessed as being a uh, Cameron one. Sure. I said this was going to be the D D Dundee Hills. Sure. 2014. So. What do we got? Oh, yeah! I haven't <laughs> even tasted it. it. I haven't even tasted it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This Where tasted, we go? This tasted similar to the 2012 Dundee Hills. That's, I was like, man, this tastes just like the 20 t 2012 Dundee Hills uh, Chardonnay. Chaz is on it. I feel good about that. Uh, right. John Moser tasted this recently. Posted a note. He says he lives for this kind of QPR, and, 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 I, and I love it. Right? Word. Like I, I don't love I don't love every vintage of this wine, but when it's on, I don't yep. think you can beat it for QPR and Chardonnay. Agreed. Um, yeah, it's it's fantastic. I think so. I think in warmer years, the oak usage is definitely ratcheted. I'm not really sure, honestly, but like the oak usage seems to be definitely ratcheted up a few notches. But there's times like in I think the 2010 and the 2011 I was just in love blown with. away with these. I wines. was in they, they love. With. They tasted like forty five dollar wines. Yeah, they were awesome. And so this is a suggestion like if you've got a few bottles of this or you buy a case of this, sit on it for a little while. I think so. I I recently um, well I should say like last year I think ran into somebody at the wine stores that was drinking like a ninety six Dundee Hills Chardonnay yeah. and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so 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 not our favorite tonight. Like definitely younger, but still good. Yeah, yeah. With ups, upside, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so the last wine, so it's 2014. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, Dan screwed yeah, up yeah. by telling me. Like, you no, sure no, it's good. Um, let's look at the glass top. Is it another Cameron wine? <laughs> you said well, it's. You said you have an AVA, a Willamette Valley, and a. So this yeah, is definitely this a Willamette is the Valley. Valley. <sighs> hmm. I don't know who it would be from. You gotta pull, yeah, you gotta pull the bag. I'll just say it's from Cameron. There you go. Bam. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so, I I enjoyed this quite a bit tonight. Uh, over 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 the other one. Over performing. Um, yeah. And and I think with with the hesitation that like and seeing that this is the cheat, I thought these were going to be swapped. Seeing that this is more of the entry level one, I'm even more comfortable saying there might be a little touch of RS on there. Yeah. Um, and I feel like these make a good. Kind of like a good dance between if you want a little more riper fruit, go here. If you want a little little more austerity, a little more subtlety and elegance, go here. If you're tasting these in a lineup, don't be dummies and taste that one first. I should have uh, I should have yeah. arranged I should have arranged that uh, a little better, but uh, oh, well. that's how that's how double blind goes. Um, yep. 
Solid stuff. Killer I was, show. That was that was. I was fun. really excited to taste this lineup that of Cameron really Chardonnays. Fun. Right there. If you if you haven't heard of them, definitely one of the one of the top Chardonnay producers in Oregon. Agreed. Um, seek it out. And if you have heard Mexican of them, Pinot as well. Yeah, like, actually, got a lot, yeah, of, a lot of Pinot Noirs. Um, but definitely one of the top producers. Very very good wines. Yeah, so. runs runs the drivers. Actually, endless cool stuff to look up about them if you get the chance. Very yeah. very cool. Winemaker is super cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Seize the opportunity. Hope you enjoyed this show. Thanks for watching. Uh, question of the day what's the next blind show you'd like to see us there do there you go yeah 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 Throw honestly I would love to like blind shows are fun yeah like this was sweet so um, if you'd like to see us do a certain blind show we definitely are it's easier for us to find Oregon wines big time so like if you tell us like eh, you know it, Italian Barolo that's gonna be harder for us right right so we'd definitely be more interested in finding something from Oregon or from Washington, but let us know. And, and maybe we'll that... feel inspired if you want to really push the envelope and improve the odds that we'll do it. Put together a shopping cart on some website and send us a link to that yeah. shopping cart. If it's like three bottles and we're feeling into it, we might just push the button. It'll show up on the show. That would be awesome. Yeah, That'd be fun. Put together a shopping cart for us. That'd be fun. All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers.